Before the video starts guys, I just want to ask you all a question. Have you ever had those days where you're watching Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy and enjoying every minute of it, but you sit there and think, man, I wish I could watch a really bad video trying to explain why Toby is the worst Spider-Man of all time? Well, I have, and now I'm regretting it. Yeah, you can say that again. Because first of all, not only did you misspell Raimi in the fucking meme, you muppet, but also there is no way that you're gonna convince anyone that Toby is a bad Spider-Man in only 10 minutes of a video. I'm sorry, but at the very least, giving credit to Cosmonaut where credit's due, his video was like 25, 30 minutes long, which is more realistic when reviewing free films, maybe four if you include No Way Home. Did you know I could read minds? I'm gonna read yours right now. Are you serious? I'm very serious. Toby Maguire is the worst Spider-Man. You sound insane. Buckle up, bitches. And I don't mean it metaphorically, or rhetorically, or poetically, or theoretically, or any other fancy way. He's the worst. Straight up. Have you ever heard the term, you're smarter than you look, but it's better than looking smarter than you are? That's basically how I'd describe that last segment. Like, just because you say a load of fancy words, that doesn't make you intelligent, my guy. The dislikes. Oh no, the dislikes. Oh, and literally in the next segment, you proved my point perfectly by acting like a child, or more specifically, the ultimate Joker effect. Been there, done that with multiple rabid fan bases of multiple things. I've built up a tolerance after all these years. If you've built up a tolerance to something, then why do you feel the need to publicly make it broad? Like, surely if you've made a tolerance to something, you don't need to say it. Like, you're confident enough to live without other people knowing your thoughts and feelings. It's kind of where self-confidence comes from. You don't really need public opinions to validate you, no? For starters, let me tell you the problem with some of you fanatics, if you haven't already clicked off and disliked that is. You seem to be laboring under the delusion that just because the movies are good, the Spider-Man is good. Well, yeah, he's the main fucking character. Like, people can be forgiven for thinking that. But also, please don't try and criticize quote-unquote fanboys. Like, you're not gonna get anywhere in life, my guy. At the end of the day, there are legitimately Raimi fanboys out there, and yeah, they probably can't be reasoned with, agreed with, understood, bargained with. They just need to exist. But you trying to criticize them is not helping. If anything, it's adding fuel to the fire, my guy. But even Helen Keller can see that not only is Tobey Maguire not that good as a Spider-Man, his Peter's an asshole. Pointless anecdotes? Are you actually gonna give us good facts? I mean, we're literally like a fifth of the way through the video and you haven't brought up fucking anything at the moment. And he's insufferable. For instance, Tobey Maguire has this permanent smile that just doesn't seem to go away. Uncle Ben's in front of him bleeding guts, and he's over here giving this, Hello, I'm from HR Smirk. Too much Botox Smirk. Okay, and what's the issue with that? Uncle Ben regains consciousness briefly, smiles at Peter, and, you know, Peter responds by smiling back. When Uncle Ben eventually passes, literally seconds later, Peter breaks down crying, and funnily enough, all smiles are gone. Like, you're just ignoring context, my guy. You're just nitpicking parts of a scene that supports your narrative when your narrative is shit. You're smiling! Your uncle just died and you're smiling! Yeah, and he was smiling at the graduation, and he also smiled when Norman Osborn was praising him. Like, what is your point? Like, is Peter Parker just not allowed to be fucking happy? Oh no, Harry, are you dying? Aw, shucks. Are you seeing this? <laughs> Thought we wouldn't notice. But we did. Yes, and this is exactly the same as the Uncle Ben death. Harry regains consciousness, or debatably doesn't even lose consciousness. I mean, it's pretty much all off screen. Peter's smiling at him because they put their differences aside. It's literally the whole fucking point of the movie. In their last moments, Peter apologizes to him and, and they forgive each other, which is why they're smiling. Immediately after Harry passes, Peter breaks down crying and looks like a flubbering mess. Like, what is your problem? 
Harry himself is smiling and he's the one dying. You can try to defend it all you want, but does this look more like a, oh yeah, we were best friends, huh? Or a, I'm sorry, I just broke character, my bad. Well, I literally did defend it by debunking your claim. And yes, you are right. It very much looks like a, we are friends moment. Like, they're literally putting their differences aside, and in Harry's final moments, he forgives Peter and says, You're my friend, my best friend. Like, what about that makes him an asshole? Now let's get into the insufferability of it all. I just want to take a moment to say that this video is 10 minutes long, and he, so far he's complained about Toby quote-unquote smiling at random points in the films when you know, sad shit is going on. He's clearly not going to criticize the growth of this Spider-Man or the powers or the villains or anything. No, he's just going to find random things to nitpick, essentially throwing random shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. I miss Cosmonaut Hour. Peter's life is so shit. And I get that's kind of associated with the whole Peter Parker thing. I have to always be a loser, but this much of a loser, and he does nothing to help his situation. He's getting his ass kicked by other villains. He gets his ass kicked by life. So if you're in agreement that it's a Peter Parker thing for him to get his ass kicked by life, then what's the issue with Toby Spider-Man? Like, Spectacular gets his ass kicked all the time in, you know, so social circumstances. Same with the animated series. Like, the MCU Spider-Man literally has to delete his fucking life from existence. Like, I don't get what you mean. Like, what exactly can Toby do here? He's fully aware that if he reveals that he's Spider-Man, he's putting his loved ones at risk. I mean, that's what happened in the fucking first film. Norman Osborn figured out he was Spider-Man and he immediately went after Aunt May and MJ. Like, what exactly is he supposed to do? He gets his ass kicked by his own aunt. Hey, where are all my comic books? Oh, those dreadful things. I gave those away. I have literally no words since in that exact same fucking scene, she literally reassures him, tells him that he she loves her, and gives him a massive pep talk that is one of the commanding factors that leads him to become Spider-Man again. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you getting your books knocked out of your hand and stepped on in college? College? Bro's getting spitballs spat at him, bright shit shined in his eyes, only thing missing is a wedgie and a swirly. Say you don't know anything about Spider-Man without saying you don't know anything about Spider-Man. Isn't that right? I will live to piss on his grave. Maybe that's why he was laughing. He wasn't laughing. Literally a film and a half takes place between these events. And in Spider-Man 2, Harry was resentful towards Spider-Man and by extension Peter Parker for taking pictures of Spider-Man and give him giving him publicity. He's also drunk in that moment where he slaps him. We see multiple times later on in the film that Harry doesn't want any harm to come to Peter. He literally asks Doc Ock to not hurt Peter when trying to find Spider-Man. And again, in Spider-Man 3, they literally resolve their issues after their friendship falls apart. So what the fuck are you saying? It's becoming more and more difficult to take you seriously, and your arguments weren't good to begin with. Then he has to take a picture of the girl of his dreams marrying another man. My god, let's leave the planet at this point. I noticed Kristen Dunst as MJ gets a lot of flack for these movies, but she wasn't even the worst MJ. This is the worst MJ. Oh, well, it wouldn't be a gaming rift response video if Insomniac MJ didn't get randomly shit on out of nowhere. What do you guys have against this poor bitch? Like, what did she do to you? Like, she's literally such a supportive character in the first and indeed second game. Like, why do you hate her? Your neighbors hated me. Yeah, they were pretty happy when we broke up. Shut up, bitch! Oh, dear. No comment. Peter begins reading poetry to woo a girl that already likes him that he didn't want. Can't communicate on the most basic levels. Right, so you didn't understand Spider-Man 1 or 2, that's perfectly fine, I'll spell it out for you. Peter is indeed in love with MJ, he's literally been in love with her since he's five fucking years old, so I don't know where the fuck you got that from. Like, he friend zones her at the funeral and treats her debatably like a piece of shit because he is keeping the, his loved ones safe. We saw in Spider-Man 1 
that if the villains know who he is, that Aunt May and MJ would be at risk. Maybe even Harry, maybe even J. Jonah Jameson. Like, there are so many people at risk. In Spider-Man 2, two years later, these thoughts still bother him, as you can see. We see that when he bonds with Dr. Octopus, aka Dr. Octavius at that moment, he sees that he is in love with Rosie and sees from that experience, based on Sam Raimi's words, that Peter believes that it is indeed possible to have a relationship whilst also balancing that with your talents. In Spider-Man's case, it is, well, balancing his Peter Parker life and Spider-Man life. He ha clearly has a lot of respect for Otto Octavius before they even e before they even fucking met. And what does Otto say? You want a woman to fall in love with you? Feed her poetry. This is a dorky fucking kid. He's not got a great deal of social experience. Like, he's, he's school smart, not street smart. Of course he's gonna take the words of his fucking mentor to heart. Disturbance. What are you, a Jedi? I felt a great disturbance in the Force. Just tell her your bike got ran over because it did, Spider for Brains, dummy. And the only reason he's even bothering is because he sees that she's moved on and he doesn't like it. So you think you can just quote some poetry to her and she'll hop back in your arms? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it worked for his mentor figure. Who's to say it wouldn't work for him? Also, it's pretty clear that MJ hasn't moved on. Like, she literally leaves J. Jonah Jameson's son at the fucking altar just to go back to being with Beta. Like, it's pretty clear she hasn't moved on. I don't know where you're getting this from. Selfish man, selfish man, does whatever a selfish man can. Oh, so you mean like the comics where he gives up being Spider-Man? Or the animated series where he wants to quit being Spider-Man? Or Spectacular Spider-Man where he literally wants to get rid of his fucking superpowers? Or the MCU where he wants to quit being Spider-Man? Or the Tasm films where he literally does quit being Spider-Man and crime rate skyrockets as a result? You know, almost as if this is one of the things that Peter Parker does. Like, this is literally the only fucking film in the trilogy where Peter even comes close to making selfish decisions. You could debate that it's Spider-Man 3 as well, but at the very least in that film, he has the motivation of being angered and bloodlusted and driven by revenge. In this film, yeah, he's making selfish decisions. Because when he doesn't make selfish decisions in the first half of the film, his life is complete shit. And let's talk about when this guy lost his powers and got him back. He needed MJ to give him an erection to be Spider-Man again. No, he really didn't. If you watch the film, there are multiple factors that contribute to him returning as Spider-Man, such as him saving the people from the burning building and making him feel conflicted because he couldn't save the people trapped on the fourth floor that ultimately perished, or the pep talk that he has with Aunt May where she may as well be saying to him, look, bitch, I know you're Spider-Man. You shouldn't quit because you give hope to people. Or the scene where he literally throws himself off a rooftop to try gain his superpowers back. Like, this is one of many factors in the film that contribute to him returning as Spider-Man. You take Spider-Man's pictures, right? Where is he? In a shitty apartment having erectile dysfunction. Like, that was a pretty solid joke, and honestly I would have laughed, but... Coming from this guy, it probably sounds like projection. I probably could have phrased that better. <laughs> All he cares about is MJ. A person burnt up and died in the building, and his spider sense not one time kicked in. But I bet you if MJ was in the building, he would have gotten it back. Well, yeah, literally none of his superpowers are working at the moment. We saw when he tried bashing a door down, he hurt his fucking shoulder in the process, and he struggled to pull himself up over a ledge when he was dangling down the burning staircase. Like, it's pretty clear that none of his superpowers are working. His fucking sight wasn't working. He was still wearing his glasses. Look at him watch a guy get 2 v one molly whopped in the alleyway and he doesn't do a damn thing. He turns around and walks away. Do you have to be Spider-Man in order to help this guy? You do know who Peter Parker is, right? Like he's a wimpy nerdy kid. He's not gonna take on two guys in a fight without his superpowers. <laughs> like what the fuck? Do you think Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is John Wick or something? The guy gets fired from his job after being given an impossible delivery that if he had succeeded, the guy who's employing him should have been like, hey, are you Spider-Man? There's no way somebody goes 42 blocks in only a couple minutes. You just didn't see the film, did you? Because the reason he has an impossible delivery is because he's fucking late. Please stop talking. 
So he's fired from his job. He has no money. What little money he does have was given to him by Aunt May, who barely has money herself. And then the money gets taken by Mr. Dick. To hell with him. I would have said, hey, you do realize if I starve to death, there's no way you're getting your rent, right? Yeah, to, it sounds like to me, you're just describing Spider-Man. So I'll ask you again, how does this make Toby the worst one? Right? It's near impossible to root for a character who does everything in his power to not do shit for himself. You're joking, right? Like, you're literally joking. Please tell me that you love MCU Spider-Man. I will literally orgasm. Because that character is the definition of not doing shit for himself, other than when the plot demands it. Like, how the fuck can you say that about Toby Spider-Man? That is fucking stupid. If you don't have a job, how are you gonna get paid? If you don't get paid, how are you gonna eat? If you can't eat, how are you expect to be Spider-Man if you starve to death? Dude, Joe's Pizzeria wasn't his only job. He takes pictures for the Bugle in all three fucking films. And the funny thing about your comments is that it's not even true, since in the third film, Peter actually is pretty comfortable with his financial situation. Like, he's able to afford a wedding ring for MJ, he's able to afford new clothes. So, like, your arguments only apply to Spider-Man 2, like, they fall apart when the third film comes along. So I'll ask you again, how is this Peter Parker not doing anything for himself? He's working two jobs whilst also going to college, whilst also being Spider-Man. Like, how is he doing nothing? He's literally doing more with his life than chances are me or you will ever do. And the icing on the cake being, he's an asshole. And by the third movie, he's so much of a punk. It's just unbearable. He was an asshole before the black suit. Oh yeah, he's an asshole, willing to sacrifice his own selfish desires to become Spider-Man again in the end of Spider-Man 2. Wow, what a selfish fucker. Also, Spider-Man 3 is a completely different can of worms. Please don't compare it to the first two films. Because in that film, there's literally a fucking arc about how Peter has, like, the pride has gone to his head and how he needs to relearn forgiveness. And now we arrive to the truly saddest part about this entire affair, as if it wasn't already clinically depressing as it is. This man needed a symbiote, a parasitic alien, from outer space in order to ask for a raise. Actually, no, he didn't. He used the symbiote to ask for a better job. He, like, he literally got a promotion, not just a raise. Although I'm willing to bet that if you got a symbiotic, parasitic alien from outer space, your videos wouldn't be any better, my guy. Bro has been taking 4K virtual surround sound alienware pictures for the movie equivalent of Mr. Krabs for years and only now upon being possessed with an alien does he have the balls to ask for a raise well yeah it's j jonah jameson you go up and ask him for a raise tell me how that goes like this is the same guy who fired peter twice in the second movie alone like why would he go and ask him for a raise does one need to be infected with evil to complain about things they have the right to complain about? That's what that movie failed in doing. They tried to make the black suit look as if it was this thing that was ruining him, when for the most part it was helping him, the only thing he did wrong was hit MJ. Oh yeah, you know, slapping MJ was the only bad thing he did with the suit. It's not like he brutally fought Sandman and actively b was okay with the fact that he thought he killed him. It's not like he went out of his way to get Eddie Brock fired from the bugle. It's not like he blew up half of his friend's face with a fucking pumpkin, pumpkin bomb. It's not like he actively used Gwen Stacy and treated her like an object just to get back at MJ. No, no, he literally does nothing wrong other than slap MJ. Also, guys, I just want to say that this is legitimately the first video I've ever made where I didn't complete the recording in one take. I actually had to take a break from this video because it genuinely made me so mad. And I include Ultimate Joker's videos, like, not even they made me this mad. Like, that's how bad this has been. And the worst thing is, is that we're not even fucking done yet. And the only thing she did wrong was comply with a crazy man that says, if you don't break up with him, I'll hurt him. Uh, isn't he Spider-Man? Why don't you just tell him? Yeah, that's a really good point against Raimi MJ. Like, why didn't she tell him? She's fully aware he's Spider-Man and she saw his strength firsthand in Spider-Man 2. If anything, that's a mark against Raimi MJ and not Raimi Toby. 
And apparently you like Raimi MJ? And that boy Harry is up under the table in this scene. There's no way he just evaporates out the damn building. Look at the extra. The extra looks under the table. It's like, what is he doing? Yeah, and what the fuck do you expect? Real world actors can't move like the Flash. Also, this guy keeps up with Spider-Man, even symbiote Spider-Man. Is it really that hard to believe that he can move that fast? To summarize, the movies are still good. The third one, not so much, but I can still watch that because it's funny, it's hilarious. The previous two classic movies. But Toby himself as Spider-Man and how he was written, he comes off as irritating. He's so much of a nerd. He's so wimpy. And he gets shit on throughout the entirety of all three movies. And we had to wait to the third one, the worst one, in order for him to get any type of backbone. Again, say you don't know anything about Spider-Man without saying you don't know anything about Spider-Man. Like, if you don't like nerdy characters getting the shit beaten out of them, maybe pick Batman? Or Captain America or Iron Man? Because this has been a thing with Spider-Man for years. It was a thing with the animated series, which came out, like, multiple years before his trilogy came out. Like, what is the issue? Also, how can you say that the films are good, but Toby's bad? Like, he's literally the main character. Surely if the main character was bad, the trilogy would also suffer. Especially since you have issues with the side characters as well. Like, you have issues with MJ and Harry. Like, what are you trying to say? It's carried by visuals? Obviously fucking not, because the CGI in the first film has aged like cheese. The villains? Well, I mean, that's a valid take, but look at Spider-Man 3. Some of the villains there were not that good. To me, the most Peter Parker of Parkers was Andrew Garfield in the Amazing Spider-Man series. Unfortunately, those movies didn't work out, but I'm glad he was redeemed. He seemed to me the most complete Peter-esque person that we have gotten on screen. Tom Holland was just so much of a kid, so ill or will random, can't take anything seriously, but did show seriousness when it came time to do so in character progression and growth. Unlike Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, who in my opinion, de-evolved as the movies continue to go forward. Unlike Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, who in my opinion, de-evolved as the movies continue to go forward. What you just said, is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. God have mercy on your soul. Okay, I'm actually done. No, I'm serious, I'm done. Like, this video is by far the worst take on Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man I've ever seen. I challenge you guys to find a worse take than this. And honestly, if you do, send it to me on Discord. Maybe I'll make a video dedicated to it someday. But anyways, if you enjoyed this shit show, then... I don't know, subscribe to the channel, fucking donate me some money, I don't fucking care, <laughs> like, join the, on a serious note, um, join the Discord, um, it really means a lot having you guys here, a lot of people have joined recently, which is awesome, and, you know, feel free to join the live streams, because it really means a lot, and it's great having the opportunity to talk to you guys, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one, Jesus Christ, this video was so shit.